So far, we've been looking at the general linear algebra and its subalgebras, which are pretty concrete examples that we can grasp a hold of. But sometimes we're interested in abstractly algebras, wherein we just define some set of constants, some finite description that can, from which we can completely recover a unique Lie algebra. And so our goal in this video is to determine when we can do this. And so that brings us to the idea of structured constants. So if we have a Lie algebra L, then we can fix a basis for it, say beta equals x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. Now we know that if we understand the commutation relations for any of the basis vectors, then we can deduce the commutation relations for any vector in the space because of bilinearity and because the basis vectors span the space. So here, what we're going to do is just look at the pairwise bracket between any two uh, vectors in our basis. So suppose I had x sub i and x sub j for any i and j between 1 and n, inclusive, and I take the bracket between the two of them. That's going to give me another vector in the space, and so I can represent that as a linear combination of my basis vectors. And so the coefficients in front of my basis vectors, as I've pointed to with this red arrow, are going to represent the structure constants. And here, I'm, I'm using L to denote an index, not an exponent. And so, of course, there are n cubed of these structure constants because I have n choices for i, n choices for j, and n choices for L. And so, I hope it's clear here that, the, the, that if you fix a basis, the set of structure constants will be unique. And so, going backwards, if you give me a valid set of structure constants, there's only one Lie algebra that can correspond to it up to isomorphism. However, in, in, it doesn't go the other way, which is a Lie algebra doesn't necessarily have one set of structure constants because this clearly depends on your choice of basis. So I said a valid set of structure constants just a moment ago. And so the question is, when is a set of structure constants valid? Well, obviously it's valid if you start with a Lie algebra and then you produce your structure constants, but what about the other way? What if you gave me a set of structure constants? How could I deduce if those correspond to a Lie algebra? And so it turns out that the answer lies in our axioms. So if you give me a Lie algebra that is spanned by, or rather, if you give me a set of structure constants that correspond to some n dimensional Lie algebra, right? So you give me a n cubed structure constants, a sub ij l. Uh, where i, j, and l range from 1 to n, then it turns out that by looking at our axioms, we can deduce the important and necessary, uh, and, and it turns out sufficient, uh, relations we need to specify Lie algebra. So if you give me um, two basis vectors, xi and xi, then of course their bracket has to be zero. And so uh, this, in, in this box here, this first one, is the first set of restrictions we have on our structure constants. And so this follows immediately from we have xi bracket xi is equal to, by the definition of the structure constants, um, k, or let's use l, l equals 1 to n a sub i i l times x sub l. However, this is also equal to 0, and so each of these coefficients are 0. So that's where we get this first relation. The skew commutativity relation here that we we know that follows from alternat alternativity and bilinearity forces another condition. And so this can be seen very easily as well, which is if you have x i bracket x j, right? This thing, let me make some more space here. This thing is equal to L equals 1 to n a sub i j to the L x sub L. And um, in the other direction, x sub j comma x sub i is equal to l equals 1 to n a sub j i l x sub l. So clearly, because this and this are related by uh, times minus 1, then each of these coefficients here must be related by times minus 1. And so that's where we get to the second relation. The third relation it uh, follows from the Jacobi identity. Um, and so I've done the, the math here, but the, the, it's not really that important to memorize the results down here, but I, I'll, I'll still walk through 
what I did to derive it. So if you take any three basis vectors in your space, then you want them to satisfy the Jacobi identity. And so now we actually can expand out this bracket because you gave me a set of structure constants. And so by expanding it all out and grouping like terms, what we see is that um, the coefficient of any basis vector uh, will be this big, or this big sum right here. And so we want that sum to be zero if you want the entire uh, vector to be zero. And so that's where we get this last relation. And so I hope, even though I'm not explicitly showing it here, I hope it's clear where, uh, why these are the three things we need to check. Because those are the, really the things that we impose on, on, the, on the brackets. Um, and so that's pretty much our, covers our small uh, uh, digression on abstract Lie algebras. And so we'll move on into the next section in the next video. So thanks for watching.